Apparently, we have about 74% of people believe that XRP will surpass its all-time high price this year. Let's get into it. What is up guys, Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. Let's dive into some Ripple and XRP information, kicking things off on fiatleak.com. We can see XRP has finally broken a dollar yet again, up 8.5% on the day. So I'm sure you guys have heard the exciting news yesterday with a new Ripple partner. We can see this is why our partnership with Oman's second largest bank, Bank Defar, comes at such an exciting time. It's another proof point of Ripple's vision of the Internet of Value, the IOV, to enable the world to move money like information moves today. So last week, we did sign, sign Egypt's largest bank, one of the largest banks in all of Northern Africa, and now we have the second largest bank in all of Oman. So very good, love to see it. And we can see Bank Defar launches mobile banking payments from Oman to India, leveraging Ripple Net. Beautiful, and I do expect the domino effect to continue on forward. And also in other news, I know this is not related to India, obviously, but we can see that Indonesia now also is planning to issue a central bank digital currency, just like every single country. We heard the news of South Africa, one of the BRICS nations, discussing a retail-facing central bank digital currency. Please remember as well, I just stuttered there, we have retail and wholesale. So retail, you and I, everyday people, and then wholesale is more so the interbank side of transfers. So the central bank is currently assessing which technology to use for its digital rupia, and then India is the rupee. All right, so we can go to this website as well. You guys can kind of vet this yourselves with Bank Defar and look at this. And then also right here, this partnership will enable cross-border transactions made via the Bank Defar mobile banking app to be processed instantly, reliably, cost-effectively, and with end-to-end -end visibility anywhere in the world. Today's issue with Swift Network and the Correspondent Banking Network is they, they throw a payment, they send it, they cross their fingers, and they hope it gets there, maybe in eight hours, may, maybe in four to five days, and they have no visibility. Now, of course, yeah, Swift GPI has helped um, with messaging kind of to get some ISO-rich data, but they still have no idea what they're doing. So with RippleNet, with DLT, you can absolutely see this, and everybody has a copy of what's going on when and where 24 7 seems like we should have had this update 40 50 years ago if you asked me but at least it is happening eventually now this is the first of its kind service in oman is more let's see the first of its kind service in oman is more important now than ever before as india continues to be the top remittance receiving country in the world beautiful and to no surprise all right Next up, we have FTSO.UK. Now remember, this is the Flare Time Series or Series Oracle, and these are signal providers or SPs. Now I'm just going to give a high-level um, explanation of this. And you do not have to delegate your vote. You can vote yourself, but otherwise, if you wanted to actually put some of your crypto to work, you could delegate your vote, whether that is, you know, FTSO.UK, FTSO um, dot, you know, EU or underscore EU. These groups are signal providers. So right here. Spark is earned by community participation in voting on Flare Networks. So if you're voting, you can technically get some Spark owned or distributed to you. But you guys have to decide what you value more. So maybe one group has a higher rewards ratio, but there might be little trade-offs. So you're going to have to go to each of these websites, go look at these uh, FTSO providers, these SPs, and kind of do some digging and see who has the potentially the highest reward rate or um, whose views are aligned with yours. Okay? So... I'm probably going to be delegating my vote personally and earn Spark. Um, I think it's kind of the smart thing to do, specifically since I plan to be holding a long to, or a portion of Spark, FLR, for quite some time. And uh, I'll be trying to do whatever I can with any types of uh, liquidity mining that's available as well. And I'm right there learning with you, trust me. So you can delegate your FTSO vote to signal providers and help support the network. Owning Spark will allow voters to earn more Spark every day. Beautiful. Now this gentleman, we have Christopher Seal. Why would we delegate our votes to you, for instance, over you know FTSO underscore EU or other signal providers? So why would they choose them as an example? Aren't you all essentially the same or are there different reward systems? And right here, the FTS FTSO reward structure is the same protocol for all SP signal providers. What could be a differentiator is the reward fee ratio set by the SP. So obviously that is something I'm going to be paying attention to. So I encourage you guys to check that out for yourselves. Also, signal providers may bring other sources of value to networks such as projects, which may benefit the voter going forward. Very interesting. 
All right. Now, this is actually very interesting and really telling. So we have Rantha Kahneman. Yet again, Ripple mentioned in another document, but this is different. This is mentioning trade finance. We're not talking about this little um, low value remittance payments. Arguably, I know these corridors are actually pretty massive. Um, it is pretty telling. So this is trade finance, guys. This is what I call big boy money. So this presentation just came out this month of May 2021 from the International Federation of Accountants suggests Ripple is being considered for trade finance users. Of course, we know, you know, R3 with trade finance and capital markets. Now we have Ripple, so to speak. So the trade finance narrative has dwindled recently. And of course, we remember a couple years ago, it was chaotic <laughs> with XRP usage. And yet they named or they named check Ripple in the presentation this month alone. So you guys can come to this. It's 18 pages, International Federation of Accountants and we can control find control f for ripple you can see right here just another you know mention right there just talking about transparency um lower system costs risks etc just the typical benefits all right so let me just read this verbatim if you guys are curious exploration of additional innovative solutions not yet widely adopted in supply chains such as blockchain and related tools including ripple transaction protocol the rtp are being explored by a few larger organizations to improve supply chain management through greater automation transparency and visibility very interesting and of course there's a lot of other initiatives and things working um with r3 like xtc but there's going to be a variety of use cases for all of these assets if they get liquidity there is definitely a potential success case for all of these assets it will not just be one so keep that in mind all right so we'll keep moving here now this is actually really timely as well so we have right here this is a ripple panda xrp guys definitely follow this gentleman and we have right here Financial Inclusion Global Initiative published a report on security aspects of distributed ledger technologies. And what do you know? Ripple and XRP are mentioned. So check out the table which shows the Ripple consensus algorithm is being utilized at a federal level. Right here, uh, specifically, the range of emerging DLTs such as IOTA, Hashgraph with HBAR, and Ripple can be used for various financial operations such as settling, interbank payments, verifying trade finance invoices, executing performance of contracts, and keeping audit trails. And why I'm excited about this too, not to reach too much, but you guys realize Flare, Network, Flare Networks is going live in June, and this is literally going to help scale smart contracts. So executing performance of contracts. I know this could be a different type of contract, but it's really exciting to see that XRP has the ability with its consensus algorithm, specifically leveraging Flare in the Ethereum's EVM, along with the actual just consensus of Avalanche. It's very, very powerful. So there's no guarantee, but yes, I, I am uh, maybe I'm biased and I see the success case of XRP is uh, almost inevitable. And that is not financial advice, guys. Okay, also, Algo, one of my favorite long-term holds in this ecosystem, is powering the first blockchain-based COVID passport. Now that I said the C word, I hope this video doesn't get shadow banned, but this is going on in Latin America, so just want to show you. Now, some technologies are, you know, garbage, but Algo is one of those assets I respect, deeply uh, respect. And the founder, Silvio Micali, actually founded Zero Knowledge Proofs. So we know David Schwartz of Ripple is a big fan of that, and... uh Based out of MIT, MIT runs a validator for the XRP ledger. I just kind of want to, you know, say all my typical points that you guys are well aware of when we're considering this. All right. So um, there was, let's see. So beginning this month, this system is going to launch in hospitals in three main Colombian cities. So we're going to see how this works. If you guys want to read more about this, this is on CryptoSlate.com. Okay. And let's keep going. Right here, we have crypto hedge funds show growing appetite for DeFi, decentralized finance. We got PwC, you know, one of the big four. And we can see crypto hedge funds had $3.8 billion in assets under management in the year 2020. Chainlink, Polkadot, and Aave. I thought that was pretty timely because we are aware, you know, this came out on May 24th, but we already knew that uh, Aave and Dot were already added to uh, the DeFi trusts for Grayscale. So, Eh, I'm just, you know, curious about this news. Coindesk, guys, they're a subsidiary. And who, um, who's their other you know, sister companies that are subsidiaries of DCG, Grayscale. So, you know, you got to question these motives here, but, you know, I'm rooting for this entire cryptocurrency space. Okay. Also, I wanted to show you this and drop some knowledge for anybody that's new. So, of course, we see Q&T, we see XRP, we see a variety of assets that are up and doing well this year. And of course, this is just the beginning, in my opinion, measuring the long term. But look at this drop back here, March 2020, crash. And we just had a massive, massive crash, believe it or not. And just for some perspective, before it went up 3,000% plus from the bottom, where were we before? Right here, Q3 
QNT, along with almost every single asset. Um, arguably QNT, I think. Let me did it drop before or after the March 2020 crash? Let's see, March 16th. So I think it was a little ahead of the curve, almost like kind of warning us that other assets were coming down, and then it took off, absolutely blasted. So look at that, from one dollar all the way up to 40 bucks. Guys, insane. That's a 40x, a 40x. And arguably, I know we would, did in fact go 50, 60 bucks for QNT. And in my opinion, long term, this is a four digit asset, you know, three to four digits conservatively. Um, I'm not I'm not talking about a Dogecoin. I'm not talking like, you know, maybe Doge does well, but this asset is uh, going to be the interoperability standard, whereas I see XRP being the medium of exchange for payments. So there's going to be a variety of use cases. Okay, very complimentary and uh, created its own ISO standard, just like XRP kind of work with ISO 200. Um, this, uh, what is it, TC307? Sorry, I'm having a blonde moment, and I'm allowed to say that because I'm blonde. But uh, look at this, 93% drop wick to wick, and what happened? Because some people sold during this dump, and I was tweeting this, and I say this with kindness, but this is the truth. You need to be an absolute savage in this market. If you invest in utility, why on earth would you let it go? before this happens. I mean, if you want to sell high and try to buy the dip, good luck. I'm not doing that with my long-term holdings. Um, that's that's enough gambling for me. So 93% down from all-time high. We've shown Amazon stock doing the same thing. And what happened in just really a year later? Well, we're up 3,500%. And some people missed out on thousands of percent of gains because they either left this market and got frustrated or they chased other assets. That is one thing I've learned. I didn't chase other assets when XRP was at 15 cents or 20 cents or 80 cents. April 1st, we're at 57 cents. XRP's at a dollar today. The question is, are we done with this bottom or are we gonna get another sneak attack? So let me see what I wanted to share. Um, right here so we have ramp and we have amc so my buddy's been buying amc for a while and it's going up but i'm sticking with what i know i'm not really touching stock i'm sticking with crypto and ramp is just one example and if you guys watch blockchain backers recent video talking about the v-shaped recovery many other assets doing it and that's what i'm rooting for absolutely and i can see that happening but uh, of course i know i'm biased because i want this market to go up so we're seeing if this market does in fact do that v-shaped recovery and climb up and out if we keep moving and get that next leg up and so we have that alt season potentially even DeFi, you know alt season 2.0 for this summer that is what i want however Question is, see how this had a double bottom right here for AMC? This is a monthly ramps on a daily. I'm just looking at a variety of assets coming up and hitting these EMAs. There is a case though, sometimes when they come up and hit these EMAs, there's another drop. So this is not, you know, said to be, you know, scare you by any means. I always just try to leave a little cash on the side because if any drops happen, sometimes drops come in three or four, you know? So we got arguably got like one, two, three. It does look like three drops, but sometimes there is an additional one. It pulls you up and then boom, goes down one more. So uh, that's what I'm prepared for. Either way, I believe in the assets that I talk about on this channel. Um, XRP, QNT, Ramp, a lot of these assets. So just wanted to share. This is just me being paranoid. And now that I'm looking at a bearish perspective, maybe it means that we finally go up. <laughs> so food for thought, guys, and that's not financial advice. But overall, guys, it is great to see that BTC did in fact recover. It seemed like it bounced hard off that 30k price point. If we go below 30k, then I will absolutely start entertaining more bearish perspectives. But provided that we bounce and keep recovering, just like a lot of analysts are saying in this ecosystem, I'm going to remain bullish. And I still do believe that XRP does in fact break through all time this year. However, yes, I know a BTC crash can always invalidate the market, take it down, and maybe we do enter, you know, a bear market. However, I've kind of seen too much. I think uh, we're kind of past that point now with Flare Networks going live, relistings of XRP settlements. I do expect the next few months to be very interesting. Worst case scenario is it's a little period of consolidation and boredom to shake the newbies out that want quick gains and us long-term holders win. So just want to point that out. And also, I mean, on a 24-hour basis, I don't know why I'm using CoinMarketCap, by the way, because there is loss trading um, for ecosystems, but you just have to understand. I mean, even XRP, ADA, this fluctuates. Sometimes we're at, you know, 10 billion plus per day. Um, these assets, typically, at least, you know, a lot of the top 10, earlier it was the top 100 at the top of this market. XRP does hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, in volume every single day, every single 24 hours. And people really do not see the year-over-year -year trend here. I, you know, I, I don't, I have no idea what to say to those people. All right. Also, we have shared by CoinDesk. So we have Governor Jared Polis. Jared Polis wants Colorado to accept crypto for state taxes. 
And he quotes to say, I'd love to set that up. The blockchain friendly governor said at consensus 2021. Well, I'm sure that's a great way to get a lot of votes. And the thing is, this will be happening sooner than later. I've heard a lot of other countries and read some articles about other countries doing the same thing. Um, we see NFTs, we see tokenized real estate, you name it. It is just a matter of time as this digital economy is integrating with essentially this traditional <laughs> archaic system. I greatly appreciate everybody that hits the like button and I will catch you in the next one.